Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and we have got a fun video in store for you. In case you didn't know, this weekend is the opening weekend for the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 beta. I'm going to put up here on screen real quick the schedule so you guys know and are aware of what's going on with it. And uh, yeah, if you're new here, make sure you guys consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. And if you're coming back, hit that like button if you enjoy it as well. Uh, but without further ado, though, let's get right into the video. So... It's the end of day one of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 beta, and I just wanted to take a few minutes, sit down with you dudes, share some of my thoughts. I made a list while I was uh, rendering up another video of some raw raw gameplay of the Hurricane, which, dudes, I think that's going to be one of the meta guns. Go watch that video. Uh, it's three team deathmatch, unedited matches, uh, all back-to-back-to-back. Here on my channel as well, so make sure you guys go check that out. It's going up at the exact same time as this video, so trying to get as much content out for you guys uh, as far as gameplay and stuff on top of sharing my thoughts. So my honest opinion on on Modern Warfare Two, as of right now, just before we start deep diving into specifics, let's just take a look at my honest final verdict, at least for day one first impression. Depending on what platform you're on. And depending on how much you like the realistic feel of the Modern Warfare franchise, it will determine if this game is worth the price tag. For me, I, I think that this is going to be a good year for Call of Duty. I think it's going to be a fun year. I think there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to get to experience. And I say fun year, but really we're getting to play this COD game for two years. And I think that's another reason I'm excited about this one is because they're going to have to hyper fixate on getting this game right to retain players and engagement and they want to sell skins and all that stuff. I think this is one of the best years to buy Call of Duty simply for that if you like the way that this game feels when you play it yourself. Um, we're probably going to get the best support on a COD game that we have seen ever. So I just want to get that out of the gate and say that. Um, do I think that it's the greatest thing ever made? Do I think that it's got issues absolutely it has its own problems uh, i don't think it's the best cod game that is we're ever going to experience but i will say this that you know here's the reality that and it sucks but we're never going back to the old engine we're never going back to the old arcade shooter play style and it really it really sucks i'm just being honest like to me that really sucks it's ass but for what we're looking at here i have mostly positive things to say about this game Starting with map design, uh, there is a lot of verticality. And one of my biggest criticisms on this game in regards to map design, though, it is there are too many windows and places where people can get up and hide and stuff like that. So I will say that right out of the gate. But what I will say to lean on that, since we're trying to go in this more realistic direction, I will say this Call of Duty, so far off the three maps that we've got to experience, feels like the first COD game where whenever things are randomly placed throughout the level, like, for example, this container I'm seeing behind, it feels like there's a purpose. It feels like there's a reason, finally, for why things are placed where they're placed. And it doesn't feel like there's just crap randomly placed all over the, you know, all throughout the level. And it's like, why is this shit here? All it does is create a bunch of static crap thrown into the middle of the map so the devs can say, hey, we gave you a free map. That, like, that's how the maps in Modern Warfare 2019 felt. Even the remakes felt like that to an extent with some of the decisions that they made. So I think the maps, personally, I think they look good. Visually and color-wise, I think these are some of the best maps that we've seen out of Infinity Ward in years, visually speaking. Uh, there, there's a good combination of, of Modern Warfare color schemes and Black Ops color schemes. And while it's not as vibrant as like Black Ops 4, Black Ops 3, because I think that would ruin the aesthetic, there's a good balance of color in the map design and just the game in general. So huge compliment to Infinity Ward on achieving that because I feel like that's some an area that they've always struggled with is getting you know a good solid balance of color in their game. Uh, so that's that's like my main thing with the maps, like. Um, Biggest criticism, no three lanes. But also to compliment them, 
they're doing a lot with what they're trying to do and the maps look good and where things are placed makes sense. So the so it helps with the map flow. Now, as far as map flow is concerned, that is where I have a criticism. So depending on the mode that you're playing, depending on your team that you're playing with, if you're playing with a bunch of randoms, it becomes very chaotic. The map flow doesn't really make sense. And uh, it sucks, to be quite honest with you. Uh, there's been several times where... I will spawn and be right in front of the enemy and they're as they're coming around behind me, around in the corner, and I'm getting spawn killed. I mean, there's been several situations of of that that I have recorded. That is extremely frustrating. Um, if we look at the gunplay, so uh, hopefully you guys are getting a pretty good idea of the gunplay So from the gameplay here because we're using a couple of different little varieties of weapons, but uh, the guns feel good. They, they feel they feel heavy they feel like they pack a punch and they uh, they once you start unlocking things and this ties into the gunsmith 2.0 once you start unlocking things I think that it's a cool concept to have it to where hey I'm leveling up my m4 and as I level my m4 up I'm unlocking items for not just my m4 but my other assault rifles in that in that weapon class type. So uh, as you level things up for your M4 or your AK, other weapons in that weapon class type will level up and unlock attachments as well. So they're kind of changing up how they're doing the weapon leveling. Um, weapon levels give you the ability to attach certain items. So for example, you'll need to be level you know, like three to unlock the barrel attachment if you want to say like put a suppressor on it so you can unlock a suppressor for the m4 but if you go to try to use you know the ak-74 you're going to have to level the gun up to level three to be able to use that suppressor even though you already have it unlocked uh with the m4 so you'll still have the item unlocked but you can't attach it until you get the the gun level up so i think that's a great concept i think it's a good idea and i think it bring it takes away because the game is still going to be a grindy experience to get attachments. So if you like the idea of grinding a game, I think you're going to get that experience with this Call of Duty when it comes to weapons without feeling like, okay, cool, I just grinded this gun to level 85. I, now i got to grind this gun to level 70 to get the attachments to build the gun that I want. Uh, like you have with Vanguard and Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare 2019. So I do think I think this is another healthy change that we're seeing with the modern warfare formula movement i know is a big factor for so many people with newer cods because they're not this new engine has completely changed the game uh it's nothing like it used to be with 2019 what we've seen introduced was sliding around well i mean we've seen sliding with ghost and advanced warfare and stuff but it didn't feel the same it didn't feel like this uh it felt heavy it felt like you know if you did it at the wrong time you're probably gonna die uh but with Modern Warfare 2019 and Black Ops Cold War and Vanguard, you know, sliding is so fast and, and being fast is such a hectic or a important part of the mechanics of being good at the game. So what I feel like this game has done a really good job at is balancing, balancing that sliding mechanic because uh, they have confirmed and I can verify from playing no more uh, slide canceling. That's not a thing. So no more slide canceling. Um, they have brought the dolphin dive back, which is amazing. And as far as sliding, it's normal. So if you go and you're running and you hit and you tap your crouch button, you will slide. However, you cannot ADS. So I think the changes there are great on the movement. Um, the game is still, it's slow. It's a lot slower than Modern Warfare 19, 2019, but it's faster. Uh, it's faster than, you know, your more traditional Call of Duty. So. It's still fast paced. It's got a pretty fast time to kill for the most part. Like sometimes it'll feel like you'll shoot them four or five times, you know, hit markers, and they'll still outgun you. And sometimes it feels like you'll melt them in two shots. So, and who knows? That may be net coding. It was day one. Um, now, to conclude up this video really quick, I just want to talk about the performance and the visuals. So, we briefly talked about visuals with the map design. So, me, personally, I love it. I think this is one of the best-looking games that I've seen in a long time for the uh, PlayStation 5, 
as well as for the PC. I think this, obviously, we haven't played it on PC yet, but I think this is going to be one of the best-looking games if you have a machine that can handle it. Uh, so graphically, they've got my approval. I, there's not really much more to go into on that other than uh, it looks great. Performance. And this will be the last thing that we talk about. Um, one thing I'll say, at least on the uh, PlayStation 5 experience, I had very minimal crashing uh, over the course of 12 hours. I think I only counted three crashes. Uh, uh, I've streamed eight hours and played off stream for about four hours. And again, I think in total, three crashes. So not bad. Uh, on the PlayStation 5, anyways, the load times were phenomenal for a brand new uh, Call of Duty game. So for a good for next-gen experience, I say it's got one of the better loading times. Um, and then as far as PlayStation, I haven't got to play it on PlayStation yet. Um, I will be playing it here later in the weekend because I do have the cross-gen bundle, which was like 70 bucks. Uh, and so I do plan on playing that. I want to check it out, see how that feels, so I can give you guys some feedback on that too. So keep an eye out for that. But I will say I played with a couple of guys that were on PlayStation 4s. Uh, I'm not sure if they were PS4 Pro or standard PS4. I don't remember. Uh, I may... Maybe I didn't even ask, but they said that it was running fine and it looked fine as well. So, you know, I don't know. Take that with a grain of salt. That's just going off of what I was told. So, um, but overall, to wrap it all up, guys, I would say day one was a pretty good experience, pretty good, solid experience. And uh, based off this, I would really recommend if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, I wouldn't necessarily pre-order it. I'd play the open beta that opens up on Sunday. Uh, I'll put that information up on the screen again so you guys can check that out. But that is all I have. Um, I made this video a little bit longer than I wanted to, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I cannot wait to get back on the beta when I wake up tomorrow when this is live. Uh, I'll be recording all day pretty much, and then when I get home from running some errands later in the afternoon, I will be back live probably around 8, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, so, you know, if you've seen this video head over to Twitch, give me a follow if you're not following me, and uh, come by, share your thoughts on the beta, or just check it out. So, but anyways, though, you dudes have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you guys on our next video.